which of those teams will show the most desperation and make a win now move next Thursday? That's clear. The Lakers. The Lakers are just good enough to do They're something so in stupid. It. Welcome back to Point of Contention. Five topics, five minutes, five points of contention coming up on the show. We got desperate teams. We got the best in the West. We got Coach of the Year picks, Rising Stars, and West All Star Guards. Today, February 2nd, it's Groundhog Day. Jay, are you a believer in the Groundhog? Absolutely not. It is one of the stupidest traditions. In wow. the world, the fact that that we think this idiot groundhog can determine whether we continue with winter, and and does anyone actually pay attention? This this groundhog never actually predicts whether winter is right. I, I need a better accuracy. When worse, has winter ever been NBA over? officials for the Lakers. When has winter ever been over on February second? It's of course it always sees a shadow. There's always six more weeks of winter. Like yeah. We we don't have to fact check it. Winter's never over on February second. Groundhog Day was a good movie though. It's a great movie, Marcus. Yeah, you got you have to like Groundhog Day. Uh, there was a point in my life where I did. Then I grew up. Wow! 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 Goodness! All right, who, let's get to it. Who, who doesn't like Bill Murray movies? Come on, Bill. I mean, he's he's a goat, right? Yeah, no, nah, he's great. Of course, he's the, yeah, he's the Adam best. Sandler's right. the goat. I actually feel that way, really, though, about Chevy Chase movies. Chevy Chase, yeah, yeah, Chevy Chase is. I do like it's the like, vacation yeah. movies. I like the vacation movies. Anything other than that, I'll bet. I'll admit, I don't love your Caddyshacks. I don't love your Fletch. Like, I, I it's fine, but I don't love it. Not the not yeah, the it best. Was, it was great when I was seven. All right, let's get to our two contestants in this corner. The most <laughs> braggadocious Beantown bench warmer on a college team that went two and twenty-one. He writes Celtics. He reps Kings. Two and twenty-two. And he still believe that last loss. Still believes in uh, who? Who could we? Who could we throw in here? Bobby Hurley. Uh, Aaron well, Kraft. Absolutely. Yes. I believe I, in Bobby the whole Hurley, Hurley was, family. That wasn't his fault. He got in a, well. I mean, I don't know if the car accident was his fault, but you know, he got in a car accident, ruined his career. We'll leave it yeah. at that. Bobby, well, I still believe in the whole Hurley family. They can all could, coach. He could, well, okay. Except for Bobby. Ride with, ride with him on Peloton at the Kid the God. It's <laughs> Jay Sacramento King. Jay, the NBA officials said they lose sleep over missed calls. What causes you to lose sleep? My job. Everything about my job. I, I watch the Kings until like 1 a.m. every night. <laughs> and then that's why I never get any sleep. Uh, so that's why. Yeah. Also, yeah, but, I can do one minute of King's talk every, every week. That other podcasts are ripping off, by the way. And in this corner, the most <laughs> versatile media member the Bay Area has ever seen. Three books, long titles, find them in bookstores. He's the friend from Frisco, the bro from Berkeley, Sauce in Sausalito, the media in Alameda, the AO in Vallejo, the Petty in Petaluma. Most importantly, the OG from Oakland, it's Marcus S. Thompson. Marcus, what causes you to lose sleep? Racism. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that that's that's you know that's a good answer. I mean, that's a good, yeah, that's yeah. A good that's answer. I, don't, I lost lost a lot of sleep about dealing yeah. with racism. Yeah, yeah, that's a uh, that's a better answer than uh, watching the Kings. I guess that's a tough tough transition for this podcast. Yeah, it's folks. gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a, a tough a, month for y'all. It's gonna be it's yeah. gonna be rough. It's a short month, but you know, it's just that he's not going to Super Bowl. You got you got four weeks. Four weeks of four weeks. Punks <laughs> of Tony Phil <laughs> races shadow this four weeks. I can't. <laughs> All right, we did it. We brought it back. Panther fulfilled. Schleck, start the clock. Take one. The trade clock is ticking. Desperate times call for desperate measures, fellas. The NBA trade deadline is officially one week away. There's some prominent teams on the outside looking in. You got your Bulls, you got your Raptors, your Blazers, your Lakers. Jay, which of those teams will show the most desperation and make a win now move next Thursday? That's clear. The Lakers. The Lakers are just good enough to do they're something so stupid. It. Yeah, they're, they're just good it. enough. They have been playing like okay lately. LeBron is has been at just an outrageous level for someone of his age or anyone really. Yeah. Um, Davis just got back. Achimura like doesn't 
really do a lot when he's on the court, but also he's six eight and athletic, which they really, really needed. Yeah. And they still have those picks to go out and get like two or three more guys who can just contribute, which they could probably convince themselves is all they need because the Western Conference is wide open. LeBron is playing at an extremely high level. Like this is this is not peak LeBron. Yeah. But he's been amazing lately. Um, part, of, part of me wonders if uh, if once he gets this record in the next couple of games, will he chill out wonder. a little bit? You don't wonder. Will he chill out a little bit? Because he's really it. going right now for this thing. And I, you know, I, I wonder, you know. No, he's feeling it because he just said like, he's not going away anytime soon. He's going to play for at least a few more years. Like he, oh, he's really says. feeling it right now. Yeah. He's uh, really feeling it. Marcus, which of these teams is going to make a move? I'm going to go with, yeah, I feel like the Lakers, man. I feel like the, getting Anthony Davis back, uh, the way LeBron is playing, like th- they have the capital. And you know what? You know who's actually gained some level of value? Hmm. Like Russell Westbrook. Russell He's Westbrook been looks really good bad. in that role, man. He's been really man. good. I'm going to I'm going to bat back on that one. He has put up <laughs> points, rebounds and assists in that role. Hey man, he need, what's it, How does that it, not How yeah, does that not equal trade value? Yeah. How does that not how does expiring that his deal. trade value is that he has an expiring deal. Let, let's let's not act like and, Russell and Westbrook has been this no, super but, helpful player. He's been he's embraced it though. No, 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 no. You 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 you're saying that as if you have to be a super helpful player to get traded. Like there right. aren't general managers in the league who like don't Rui look at Hachimura. like, hey, look what he's averaging lately. And then Rui just, Hachimura just got traded. He wasn't super yeah. helpful in Washington. He's, no, like, he was not. Russ has done enough to make you think, yo, he's not gonna blow it up when he gets there. Like yeah. you can put him in a couple of roles, and he's an expired contract. Like and like at some point, he he does know how to like. He still can play hard and be reasonably effective when he's playing sure. hard. Like. I do feel like he's shown that. Like two months ago, you didn't know if Russ was going. You could trade for Russ. He's like, you know what? I'm out. I don't feel like doing this. Yeah. But I feel like this role he's had make it. It gives him some level of value. I think, and that to me puts the Lakers in position, probably better than anybody to like make a move and make a surge. Who else can make a move and end up like seriously the move paying off? I don't know how many teams that have the capital to make the move right. and have the pieces to take advantage of a move like that uh yeah to me it's 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 the lakers really they have to be buyers they have to be but be only because lebron has been good enough and the rest of their roster has looked like not really competent but like they look like they could be a couple pieces away from being at least a challenger look man i'm I'm not saying i'm seeing on twitter because they wouldn't and they need a lot of help defensively especially i'm seeing on twitter hand wringing over the wenyan gabriel minutes for the Lakers, like Lakers fans and Lakers writers and stuff, like they want more, right? They want more, yeah. yeah he's, that's he's when you know right? you need a little bit more depth. Yeah, that's but yeah, that's when you know, like, all right, maybe we gotta maybe we gotta fill this roster out a little bit. I'll <laughs> tell you, uh, who do you think who do you think should sell more, the Bulls or the Raptors? I think the Bulls are more hopeless than the Raptors. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. Be, because. Because DeMar DeRozan is amazing. Like, watching that guy yeah, play he, he's is so just good. spectacular. He has really, almost as much as anyone else in the NBA, he has mastered what he does. Yeah. And and he's really kind of unstoppable. Um, but at the same time, like, the mix with him, Zach Levine, and Vucevic was never going to be good enough. Right. And And we've seen that now. Lonzo Ball was supposed to be a key part of that team and who knows what's happening with him. And it, and it can't just be like, well, once Lonzo gets back, we're good. Like he's a really, he's a really nice point guard, really nice role player, but he's not pulling all that together. Right. And none of those guys have any value really to Rosen more because of his age. I think he, he could fetch something good if, if yeah. they decided to move him. Caruso could fetch something good, but Levine's contract is bad. Vucevic's contract is bad. And, and the Raptors like, they're, well, Vooch they're is not expiring, a good team. but that next one's going to be bad. The, the Raptors aren't a good team, but they have players who could really help a team. And I think OG Ananobi could really help a team. Pascal Siakam could really help yeah. a team. Fred Van Vliet could help a team. Even Gary Trent, you go down to him. Like yeah. he could be helpful in the, in the right place. So I, I, I think 
the Bulls just like there's nothing there. And and they should probably recognize that, but maybe they yeah. don't. Marcus, they you... did put this core together like a year ago. <laughs> well, yeah, it's <laughs> it's not like this has been a long term thing. Like maybe we get 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 it together. Like it's it's been like a little over a year. Uh Marcus, would you give multiple first round picks for Alex Caruso? I would multiple? personally. Yeah. Multiple? That's been like, that's I, been I, the, I gotta, the whispers that that's what that's the asking price. Picks. Yeah. That's the asking price. I got price. a stack of first round picks right here. He could have a couple of them. Like all right. <laughs> nah. I, yeah, they're they're wilding. I mean <laughs> that's what you asked for, right? <laughs> hey, I'd like this I'd like this car yeah. for a hundred dollars a month, please. Yeah, and then yeah, at some point they, they go say. like when they walk away, you be like, "All right, I'll just play it. I'll just play yeah. it. All right, all right, all right, whatever all right. you want, whatever you, whatever yeah, right. you want me to pay, I'll pay. I'll do a he little." Is, it's, just for the record, he is averaging five point seven points per game, and he is a heck of a defender. He is a heck yeah. of a connector. But like, if you're giving up multiple first round picks, you at least want someone who could threaten to score the basketball. But also, like, who's giving up? Like, it's Levine, it's Demar, it's Vooch. And like, I love Caruso, but a couple first round picks is a lot. Yeah. It's, all it's, right. It's, it's, that's wild behavior. <laughs> Take two, how to choose coach of the year on Wednesday. Our own Sam Amick, Josh Robbins, and James Edwards III asked the question, who leads the coach of the year race? They discuss their own personal criteria for choosing their award winner and give their selections. And their selections include, oh, Schlecht, I always pump fake on this one, Mark Dagnall. Yeah? So that's close enough of the thunder. It's time to learn that man's name. I don't know it either, but, but yeah. Oh, I got time, thumbs up. Time. Eat shit, Jay. Keep that in. Uh, Mike Brown of the Kings and Jacques Vaughn of the Nets. Wow, no Joe Missoula, huh? Jay, who do you have as coach of the year so far? We know who you have it. Marcus, who do you have as coach of the year so far? Probably the same person Jay has. Okay, mm-hmm. that's fine. I'd, <laughs> I'd rather hear it from you than from Jay. It, it to me, it's uh, Mike Brown has them number three in the West with virtually the same team that couldn't make the playoffs. Uh, and, and it's even bigger. They did than add Malik like, Monk, bro. My bad. Valuable addition. Murray, Kevin Herter. Too. Kevin Herter. Valuable addition. Kevin Herter. Kevin better than Malik Monk. Came last they year, right? a lot. He came last year. He, he was a mid-season trade last year. He was on the squad. Who? Was it Kevin Herter on the, the squad last year? No, no, no that was no. the summer. That was after DeJounte Murray. You're thinking of DeMontis Sabonis, oh, yeah, the see, other way. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. The other white guy, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I can say because it's February. Uh, it's February. <laughs> the, the, the culture and expectation of the Kings right now is, like, directly connected to Mike Brown. And yeah. it, it's, it's actually kind of wild, right? Like, how fast he's generated – this this vibe and this expectation and i give him coach of the year for the simple fact that trey lyles finally looks like the dude i thought he was coming he was going to be coming out of kentucky he dunked like, on rudy so, gobert the other night he did man, man. oh man Tra- who is whatever happened like what the hell is this trey lyles is a monster with mike brown this is insane sabonis fouled out in that game and it allowed them to go five out and it just ruined the wolves <laughs> in overtime it, just, it, it made chris them. finch be like I gotta figure out a way to yeah. guard five out. It's like you gotta figure out a way to guard Trey Lyles. You're he was trouble. talking like he was talking like I gotta find a way to like cover this gambling debt that I have. I don't know what to do. <laughs> like that's how he was talking with like I gotta figure out a way to cover five out. It, it's absolutely Mark, Mike Brown. It yeah. has to be Mike Brown. Well, all right, how, because how cool- he had to wipe the stink off an entire franchise. He had to wipe away losing habits for De'Aaron Fox. He had yeah. a he had he has a a rookie in Keegan Murray who is one of their key pieces. He had to integrate Kevin Herter. Top, top they don't have. I mean, it's not like they hardly play. have any defensive minded players and on so the entire roster. You know this. I look. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. I'm sure. I kind of feel like Sabonis has been a fake All Star in the East. Like a but now he's like, a real all star in the West. Yeah, I feel like this is the first year where I'm like, yeah, man, this is it. And no, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't that, think the reason I say this because the East has often been like, well, shit, we need some front court dudes, right? Like that's how it's been in the East for a while. Hello, Nick Lavusevic is a is a two time all star. Like that's kind of where we've been, and it's not. I don't. I mean, I can say now, like I don't mean to diminish Sabonis's accomplishments with that, even though I'm. That's absolutely yes, what I'm absolutely really diminishing. His accomplishments. Look at this season, and I and I'm like. Him doing the him doing this this season is way more impressive than what he did in Indiana to me. Yeah, and and this it, it cannot be stressed enough how much they had to overcome of just the king stink. 
Yeah. Like they had they hadn't made the playoffs since 2006. The last time they made the Lost playoffs in the league. Meta World Peace was averaging 41 minutes per game for that. The it departed was, Kenny Thomas, was Sharif, in Abdul the Rahim. theaters. The, the departed. Part, the departed came out. The number one song on the Billboard charts was "Bad Day." Where Kevin was Martin. Kevin need Martin need was in his most. second season, I believe. And Pick I don't up even the like these. And the magic is long. I don't even like these. We, we always go to the the hard scramble. Who did more with less? Like who surprised you, coaches? Like I do feel like sometimes. Sure. You know the coaches who are handling expectations, right? And and keep it like they should get some credit, but this is one of them times. I'm basically taking a shot at, at Schleck's Schlex coach, but whoa! Okay. Say, whoa. His whoa, 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 whoa. Say his name. <laughs> Say his name. Say his name. Mark, no diggity, no doubt. There it is. Yep, you got it. <laughs> Can't say it wrong in February. Um, I do think I do think that Mark Dagnald is is uh, worthy of like balloting on no that, question, right? No like, question. like no, I think I think question. Jacques Vaughn. I think the job Jacques Vaughn has done, like taking over that shithole. Yeah. And with with where it was and the turnaround has been crazy impressive. I I mean Joe Mazzula, like Joe Mazzula, an interim coach with the you know best record in the league for most of the season. Like there's yeah. there's a lot there's a lot there, but it's funny. Like to me, Mike Brown, like they're not even winning like Mike Brown teams do. It's just like they're a, a mediocre at best defense. And a historic and a offense, and, offense and yeah. killing in in clutch situations. In cl- that's the to me that's that the team difference. is so like, well coached in clutch, clutch situations. That, like it's crazy yes. that change. Yeah, that They're that like Phoenix that team year. has made Zach Harper respect De'Aaron Fox and Demontis Sabonis. I didn't say which that. is. I didn't say that. <laughs> I, nah, you I say think it. You're saying it. They have. You got to. I didn't say that. I didn't say no, 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 no. Hey, you're, you're, you're about ready to go home. You re, you want to light the beam. The the thunder. You know what? I would has like, been I would, so impressive though. I, like, I want to <laughs> uh, hold on. I want to light the beam just because I know it would piss off Kings fans because they don't like me. I just that's why I want to light the beam. Like, hey, Sacramento's home. Let's go. They, they should have you light the beam. It would be it on the would night be on the night they they clinch a playoff spot. That's when I want to do it. That's that's push Chris Webber out of the way. Push these guys out of the way. No, uh, no, the, thund- the, the thunder. I want to see. The Thunder, I, I I feel like the Thunder, assuming they keep this going, right? Because you never know if they're going to shut people down at any given point, and you never know what injuries they might have. But assuming they keep this going, like the Thunder kind of slept on contention. as a story. They're good, and they're good, right? Like they're a really good defense. Obviously, Shea is, is phenomenal. Um, they're probably just missing a guy here and there, but like that's a good team. And, they have, and that's good they coaching. Just- they play such a fun and they style. Play they're, well. they're, yeah. They yeah. they play with so much pace. They have so many guys who can put the ball on the floor, which is going to be tough to guard, especially when when they get Chet Holmgren and start coming into their own. Um, but but they're low key built for the playoffs. Yeah, like they, they yeah, got they guys. Really are. They got a really lot are. of guys. Let's calm down. Let's calm no, no, down. No, 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 I'm just no, saying. No, 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 yes, no, no, yes, no, no, yes, like, no, yes. No. You can't disagree with February. How many guys can you? No. They got a they lot of guys who just have playoffs. a lot of the shot making, the playoffs, man. Great in potential. I'm just saying. Who has shot saying. making? Shane Gill the... just can't shoot, even though he's amazing. What are you talking about? You can't shoot. He can't look up. I his mean, just like numbers. the ability. He's to amazing. He's amazing. It's unbelievable. The ability to create a shot. They got a yeah. few guys who can do that, and that's valuable. Josh Giddy, he's built for the playoffs now. Like, come, on, let's tone it Shane down. This is an amazing story. He's a serial killer. He was. This is he's an amazing a story. They are incredibly fun to watch. They're also they, below five. They are not right. built for the playoffs. Jesus Christ! I'm telling this you, is, they got. They, is, they got. You you in two uh, years um, you're gonna be saying something different. Uh-huh. You're gonna be uh-huh. singing their uh-huh. oh, He's gonna be he's gonna be booking playoff. King's Josh Thunder Giddy. Conference yeah, Finals. Yeah, you're gonna be talking yep. all that mm-hmm. mess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. For the Josh and we'll be playoff wondering, superstar. We we'll yeah. wonder if the Wolves can make the plan. Uh, who is the best <laughs> in the West? Back after this. Today's show is brought to you by Chime. Visit Chime.com/slash NBA show for more information. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, at Chime, that's exactly what they do for you. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. 
All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up, only takes two minutes, and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash MBA show. That's Chime.com slash MBA show. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Take three. Are there any elite teams in the West? The West has averaged three teams per season with a plus five or better net rating since the 2011-2012 season. This season, none. Zero. The Grizzlies have the best net rating in the West at plus 4.3 per 100. Nuggets, best record in the West at 35 and 16. And the Warriors are the defending champs and have gotten fully healthy. Marcus, who do you think is the best team in the West? Man, that's such a tough call. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not fully buying Denver. <laughs> Even though they're clearly better, I just, man, I wonder about that bench. I wonder about their ability to defend, like, in a Western Conference Finals when, you know, when it's like everybody's locked in. But who else? I mean, who else is there? Like, every other team you would say is the best is based on something we have not seen. Like Kawhi and Paul George playing together for like a month, or like <laughs> the Warriors playing like the Warriors for like a month, like or even we, a day. The Warriors yeah, like right. do it for a day. Like, we're like, yep, yeah, no, this is theirs. So I don't even like. I don't know. Den- Denver's Denver and Memphis are. I will say this: Denver and Memphis are the two teams who are playing their version of basketball consistently all season long. Right? Like, yeah. Th- they are who they are. They've arrived at who they are. And they do it well. So that makes them elite in the West because nobody else can seem to do that. Right. So, right. But, but if they, if, if Minnesota, if, if Minnesota beats Memphis in the, in the first round of playoffs, who's going to be shocked? Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't understand. Yeah. Look, look all I know is this. Day, I would be shocked if Minnesota beat Memphis. I, you wouldn't. I'd be shocked. be shocked if they make. But it. if the Thunder be yeah. but the Thunder are built. Oh, built because the Thunder this. are built for it, man. They're you built. Mean, for hey, a Thunder if, Grizzlies. If the Thunder get in, all look, I'm saying is the Thunder, Thunder get Grizzlies in this year. series would be disgusting, just because that's all <laughs> defense, man. Like that's a defensive battle. No, no, the Thunder are built for it. That the Kings be, are the, the Kings part. are elite. There we go. I'm going with that. The Kings are elite. The elite team. Nah, dang it. Yeah, nobody's elite, man. They, they nobody's elite. elite. I, I, I'm gonna go, take it a step further. Nobody's elite in the whole NBA. And I, I think there are certain teams that could get there. I think the Celtics yeah. could get there. I think the Bucks could get there. I think the 76ers, maybe. I think the Bucks are probably the best team in the league. Like, if we're really well, here's the it thing. Down, I'm, like, I'm worried about Middleton. I'm yeah, worried it's, it's that not, yeah. he won't be himself when it matters. Otherwise, I, I would agree with you. And then the Grizzlies have a chance to get there. But it's like, and part of it is just that the bad teams aren't as bad as they used to be. There are like four very bad teams in the NBA, and that's it. Like the Magic, they can beat you. Those guys. The Magic are built for the playoffs. The Magic are built for the playoffs. Yeah, I, I will actually agree with that. They they, they are, are gonna, man. That's a good team. That's a good like. Man, I they started. Hey, they, no, no, they the they, they, for, no, they started five and twenty. Yeah. Since then, they're good. <laughs> like they had a bad. So they're kind of this year's Pelicans. Like they're good. They are, yeah, They're totally average great. right now. But the Ooh. talent there with Bon Carroll and Wagner, the, Wagner, th- those dudes, and I'm not talking about Mo. Those dudes, they're gonna be hell. They are. They are actually built for the playoffs. I like that we're talking about elite, that elite of the West, and we got to Orlando Magic talk here. Um, but, but here's the thing: there's no elite team, and that's why the Warriors still have. It, like, I still look at the Warriors as a favorite because I still, still the best to me. Yeah. I still trust them more than anyone else. The last time we saw the Grizzlies in the playoffs, they had that disgusting series against Minnesota, where everybody was just really trying to so give it bad. away. Yeah, like, I don't trust them when it matters most. But the the the, the wild card here. I, I do think the Grizzlies will be active looking for an upgrade. And if they go out and get 
mm-hmm. Ananobi or somebody like that. That yeah, totally that's... changes the calculus for me. The less but, they got to play Dylan Brooks. But other than that, the Warriors, I, mean, I, st- basically. I still think it's them. I <laughs> yeah. still think it's the Warriors yeah. in the West. Because I'm not going to trust Yo- – I-, I love Jokic, and I think he's been incredible in the playoffs. I'm not going to trust him to win the West until he does it. I'm not – it's kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's Bucks territory from a few years ago, right? Where it's like, look, until they do it in the playoff, and then they did it, right? Maybe Only that's with the maybe that's Denver is, this year. They're playing really hard right now. <laughs> it's hey, like, man, back to back road wins. They're playing really <laughs> like they're playing really hard, and sometimes it doesn't mean to win. Like this is the first no. time I've seen the Warriors where Clay could get forty, Steph could get thirty. And they are fighting. They're, 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 the and, game, right? and you know yeah. who they're fighting? They're fighting those Thunder. They're fighting the Thunder. Who's they're fighting built those Thunder, shit. baby. Yes. <laughs> All right. Back uh, after this, the rising stars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Rocket Money. Visit rocketmoney.com slash NBA show for more information. Did you guys know that the average person has like 12 paid subscriptions? Think about that. If you think you've only subscribed to a handful of services, you might want to go and double check. With Rocket Money, you can quickly identify and cancel all your unwanted subscriptions. Like, you know that streaming service you got just to watch that one TV show but you haven't used again? Well, with Rocket Money, you can cancel it very easily. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they've just completely forgotten about. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify the subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Simply find the subscriptions you don't want and press cancel. Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash NBA show. That's rocketmoney.com slash NBA show. Rocketmoney.com slash NBA show. Take four, the Rising Stars are here. On Tuesday, the NBA released the list for the Rising Stars Challenge at All-Star Weekend, headlined by rookie Paolo Bancaro, sophomore Scotty Barnes, Jalen Green, and Josh Giddy, who's built for this, fellas. Seeing that the teams are getting drafted from this pool of players, why don't we do a little mock draft ourselves, okay? Marcus, we'll start with you and go back and forth until you guys have a starting five for this Rising Stars. You've got the list right in front of you. We've got some G League guys in the mix, and uh, we got our starting five. The winner of this will be hand- handled in the comments section on our new YouTube page. Make sure you go check out. You can watch us talk every week. If you want to watch us talk, YouTube, you the Athletic NBA Show podcast. Watch Jay fumble with the microphone that does not want him to speak into it every single week. This thing, every single week, it, it breaks. When the podcast is up, go leave us a comment on the video. Let us know whose lineup is the best. So, Marcus, who is your number one pick? You're muted. Why in the <laughs> this, hell is Wimby Yama not in this game? That's a good question. Go ahead, draft him. All right, I don't care. Drafting Victor right. Wimbanyama. There we go. You got Wimbanyama, Jay. I just, I just have to first just, just speak out. Oh, boy. Why are we doing this? Why is Mac McClung, who cannot even make an you? NBA roster, in the Rising Stars Challenge? You want to put Scoot Henderson? You want to put the prospects? I just figured out how to blur there? my background. This is oh yeah, it's moment. nice, right? Yeah, go for it. Moment right here. Put put the prospects in there. Mac McClung is in his second year of professional basketball, mm-hmm. and he's not a prospect. Mm-mm. He cannot make the NBA, and he's going to be in the Rising Stars Challenge. Was in the dunk contest. Yeah, Who he's cares? An ex- he's Why? A, he shouldn't be there he's a, either. He should be found, so far away. We he finally found be... the one white player that Jay Yeah, I was about like. to say, this is an exciting <laughs> white player. <laughs> Jay is historic. like, really? look, 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 look. historic I moment. I don't dislike him. He's Matt. fun, man. The guy, it seems You've been to work shitting really on him since we put him in the dunk contest. Yes, because it's disgusting that the NBA would stoop to this level to have Mac McClung hey, in man. some of the premier events of the entire NBA I, season. And this guy is a G League player. He's a G League player. What are we doing? Yeah. Why is he in the Rising Stars Challenge? Why is he anywhere near All-Star Weekend? He should be somewhere in Grand Rapids or Erie or wherever they play the G League Feels game. like we're not going to get this draft off the ground. Okay, let's draft. Let's draft. I'm going Marcus. off the junior. Yes! 
<laughs> Speaking of guys who are not real yo, NBA prospects, yo, but he's no, amazing. you're out of your mind, man. This he's dude's gonna be an kill. MVP. He's, he's gonna, gonna kill, kill in that game. He kills in every one of these games. Like he's gonna kill everyone under 19. Hey, me, me, uh, me and Da did a pod with Trash Talk in, in France, and they were talking about like Kitty Lofton Jr. is 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 famous in France in France because they mm-hmm. remember they remember he our, was given yeah, Wemba he was, Yama buckets. He, he everybody thought was, that yeah, dude he, just yeah, knows how to play. Problem. He won. Yeah. He won the U.S. a gold medal that day. Chet had nothing for Wembenyama, but nothing. But Lofton gave him hell. Yeah, Lofton gave him absolute hell. Um, and Schlecht has let us know that G Leaguers aren't part of the draft, but who cares? Uh, are part of our draft or the draft? All the right. draft. It's just a G League team that's gonna that Jason uh, Terry's coaching. Well, so my second I player. This is my second pick is from the G League is James Wiseman, who's also not on his list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Marcus has Wimpin Yama and James Wiseman so far. Jay, who's who's your next pick? I'm going with I see I, I I want to go with Franz Wagner, but I feel like this is not an event for him. Uh-huh. I'm going with Benedict Matherin. He he's okay. gonna kill That's he's gonna one, kill yeah. in this game. Uh Wagner's a, a substantially better player at this point of their careers, but Matherin is is going to have so many points in this game. It, I just need Marcus is you well you both have screwed up this draft so royally yeah, so far. I'm, going that scoot. I'm looking he at the, on scoot. I'm going scoot. Yeah. Okay. You he got scoot. scoot. Yeah. You got scoot. He drafted scoot. Weapon Yama, who's not in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and James <laughs> Weissman, who's not in the game. Who should be in the game. Yeah. Jay, yeah, who if you, you don't pick Kamiga next, that's my next pick. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, who's your third pick? Scotty Barnes. Okay. That's a good one. I still right. believe in Scotty. Other yeah. people well, sour, believe, he's good. Believe. What do you mean still believe? I, he's I not still having believe. a bad year. But people have soured on him. Because people it's, don't watch the Raptors. He's really good. He's playing really good basketball. I mean, some of the people are his teammates, so I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a whole other issue. All right, Marcus, you're All taking right, no, Kaminga. I'm, 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 I'm going Paolo. So the I'm number one pick, the runaway rookie of the year, went. It's my, it's seventh, in this draft. Draft. <laughs> it's seventh in this draft. Went seventh in this draft. But Kenny Lofton is going to give him hell, though. He is. No, There's oh, no way Bob Caro is going to stop Kenny yeah. Lofton. He's got, he's got he's nothing not. for him. Jay, who's your fourth? These, see, this is where – I mean, I should have picked Bob Caro a long time ago, if we're being honest here. Um, yeah, but you did <laughs> But you didn't. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to just pick a, a roster full of nut job gunners. So Jalen Green is my next. Yeah, pick. I love that pick. You, you know, I love that pick. All right, Marcus, who's around? So far, you I have Victor Webanyama, James Wiseman, <laughs> Scoot Henderson, and Paolo Bancaro. Who's your pick? I, I, I need a shooter. I need, a, need some I size. Need James handler. Wiseman. I, a, <laughs> I think you know what? Hey, I'll raise you. I'll raise you your uh, uh, Jalen Green, mm-hmm. and I'm going with. Dang, I was going to say Bones hiding, but I, I just I couldn't do it. Wow. No, a, a backcourt of Bones and Scoot? That's fun. Yeah, it is. More fun than Keegan Murray? I don't know. Oh. All right, I'm going with Bones. I'm going with Bones. I need okay. to somebody to do it right. Uh, Jay, how do you round out your five to uh, compete with James Wiseman, oh, Victor Wembanyama? Jose. Jose Bones, Highland, Scoot Henderson, well, Wiseman and, and Wemby are going to be Carroll. tough to deal with down low. I'm well, Wiseman will be pretty easy. <laughs> so, relax, relax. I feel man. like Wiseman's out for this game, by the way. It's Just, tough to tough to pass on Jalen Williams because he's built for this, and he's yeah. built for a lot more than this. Yeah, he's built for real games. Josh Giddy, same thing. Mm-hmm. Make I'm, a pick. I, I mean, this is it's kind of bleak at this point. I'll go Keegan Murray. I'll go okay. Keegan Murray. He said it's kind of bleak. I just want to let everyone in the comments know none of these idiots picked Evan Mobley. Okay. 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 That was that was sheer oversight. (laughs) Is he on the list? Sheer oversight. He's on the list. Yeah, it was not bleak. Turns out it was not bleak at all. It's always. Oh, great. Turns, turns out a stud yeah. was looking me yes. right in the face. Oh, some wow. good basketball players All right, this so list Wiseman that you guys is ignored. injured. I'm, I'm, I'm using Evan Mobley as my injury replacement. <laughs> I can't believe – I also can't believe Jamie picked I didn't see Walker him on a Kessler. list. He's right Walker there. Kessler, no, right he's, like, he's like Rudy Gobert. you got to pick him last in any All-Star Weekend event. All right, take five. <laughs> my squad is nice, though. Walker Kessler is good, though. Your squad is also ineligible for this game. <laughs> <laughs> Take five. 
battle for the last guard spot in the West. No, we're not talking about these two guys drafting NBA sophomores, rising stars, and we had the worst draft ever. Honestly, I, I mean, the, I lie. hope the comments just. I had the worst draft ever, you guys. Jeez, Left all star reserves will be announced tonight. Yeah, Both the there. East and the West. The West is stacked with guards. John ja Morant, Shea Gilgis Alexander look like locks. We got Damian Lillard, De'Aaron Fox, Anthony Edwards. All all-star worthy plus some more. But one of those guys is going to be sitting at home or in Cancun or in Tulum or somewhere nice instead of making the trip to SLC. Marcus, which two guards are you going with to make the all-star team? Oh, man, this is tough. Let's, call ja, let's just call Ja and, and Shea. Locks. God, Shay, and I don't know. Hmm. Got a Devin uh, Booker. Let huh? me see. Um, maybe Devin Booker has he played enough games? I would pick Devin Booker, but he hasn't. Played He's played as many games. as Kawhi, and they're saying Kawhi's yeah, gonna Kawhi. make it. Yeah, I'm not saying Kawhi's gonna make it. Uh, two guards. I'm going with De'Aaron Fox, who's a lock to me. Uh, and the other guy's very obvious. Is a perennial lock. He should be there all the time. There's only one guy on this list from Oakland, so of course he's making my list. Damian yeah. Lillard is a hands down all star. <laughs> yeah, he's what the all star game is all about. We want to see superstars. Mm -hmm. He's a superstar, so that's easy. Sorry, Ant. I love you, Ant Man, but wow. yeah, not this wow. year. Um, Jay, who are you? De'Aaron Fox and who for you? It's well, first of all, De'Aaron Fox deserves it. So let let's not just pretend like I'm the only one who will put him in this on this list. I literally uh, just put him in. He literally just put him why in. Just like put him in the rundown. The like, yeah, what do you do? February first. Yeah, yeah, it's February. Race the black man. Mm -hmm. February. Come on, man. I gotta go with Dame too. I, Devin Booker played such a high level, but he just didn't play enough, and the competition is too much. And Anthony Edwards, like, it pains me to leave him off the All Star game because I want to see him in the All Star game. Yeah, he he would help make it fun. He would be perfect for. He that. has yeah. been. He's like, an all star player, right? Like yeah. he's yes, like he's made yes. for that type of game. Yes, yeah, he, he like he would do just some ridiculous stuff. In he that also game. should get a reward for having to you know drag he that team do. out of the dumps this year. <laughs> yes. And he yes. he's taking a mid season <laughs> leap. He is carrying them to wins. He's doing it every single night. But also when I watch him, there's still like this level of recklessness or like oh yeah he's like still got he a lot to rawness yeah. that just yeah. that damian lillard does not have mm -hmm. and that devin booker does not have and so that's the only reason why i'm not putting him in this game even though like, like watching that guy lately is just you can see him just figuring it out on yeah. the fly they've just put the entire offense in his hands and i don't even know if that's like if I thought that would be his ideal role, ideal role, but I'm now yeah. thinking like Anthony Edwards as a long term point guard is not just extremely viable, but just extremely dangerous for your whole team concept. Because if he's the smallest guy on your team, think yeah. of how huge your defense could be, how athletic you could be. So hit he, he, he's unreal, but he's also it takes the ball out of D'Angelo Russell's hands. Which is yeah, just as important. Yeah, <laughs> he's been he's been shooting the crap out of the ball lately, though. My man D'Angelo Russell has been pumping he's them, giving up in. way more on the other end. Well, yeah, I mean he's never gonna be uh, Dennis Rodman out there. I I would I would settle for Dennis Schroeder on defense at this point, like, let alone Dennis Rodman. <laughs> it's been bad, man. It's been really bad. Uh, who do you think ends up getting snubbed the worst? Is it Ant? Is it Devin Booker for not playing enough yeah. games? Because he'll have missed like what, like twenty games or something. Yeah, like Booker's going to be the worst snub uh, because or do, or would the easy thing to be to put Booker in and then add one of these guys That's as an I injury replacement? In like no offense to Darren Fox, who totally earned like has earned it, but maybe he should be the injury replacement just to make sure we get Booker in. Then there's an up in arms like, how does Darren Fox not make it? And then he gets selected, and it's first time injury replacement. Like maybe that needs to be the pay the dues. Well, he's played in Sacramento for a while, so maybe that's paying his dues. I don't know. Are the Kings going to get two? Yeah. I mean, Sabonis has to be a lock, right? Yeah, but And honestly, they're third. Like, here's the thing. If they, if they yeah. were still toiling around, like, six through ten or whatever, like, yeah, sure. Like, West. yeah, maybe maybe two maybe two are not going to. They're third. Like, they have to get two at this point. The Kings. Mike Brown. Salute to Mike Brown, man. Salute to Mike Salute Brown. Salute to yeah. Mike Brown. Is Aaron oh, Gordon yeah, getting yeah. in? I hope so, just to see your reaction. I really hope so. Hey, we not, but he should. Uh, I don't know. 
he's not but yeah he's i don't know i don't know i feel like part. we need to reserve an all-star spot for the non-all-stars who play like all-stars for half the season what, what is this the pro bowl like team. we're putting special teams guys on there the jamal Basically, crawford yeah, or, yeah. yeah yeah that's what it should be hey you know what else we should be drew, doing drew holiday uh it should be an all-star like mm-hmm. what, he, what he's done for that team like clamps they, like yeah man they, yeah Carrying the low, Middleton's out. I like that. By the way, a hundred years ago today, this is for you, Jay. Okay. First black Uh-oh. professional basketball team started. Not hundred years ago. Hundred years ago, All Star Weekend. All Star Weekend. But why is that for me? Well, the, the, why? Why so, wouldn't it be? Man, I'm, 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 I'm. Yeah, man. You come on. I thought we were vibing. I thought you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. no, no. no. I, I, you guys I both picked Aaron Fox. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Black appreciate black the history, knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, Jay you know, just kind of uh, pushed that away on, really, man, real easily. The Renaissance, like, man. Yeah. The New York Rens. Let's go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's go, Rens. February 1923. It's a go, black history moment for this episode. I'm going to come next week when we do this. I'm going to wear some Renaissance gear. Let's see, I'm going to get some Amazon Renaissance gear. At the Hopefully, All-Star man. game in honor of Black History Month. Let's see if they do that. Huh? Hint, hint, Adam Silver. Hint, mm. hint. In Salt Lake City. That's going to do it for this <laughs> week's Point of Contention. Thank you for listening. What? The All-Star Games in Salt Lake City. I'm just saying where it is. I'm just reminding people. Check it out. All Star Weekend, Salt Lake City, 2023. Uh, hey, you know what else you should check out? The Bounce. It's a free newsletter every single morning, penned by yours truly, the Athletic NBA staff, Shams Tarania. You get the best coverage. We'll tell you where you need to be, where your eyes need to be every single day. Uh, you can sign up at theathletic.com slash bounce newsletter. Make sure to subscribe to all of our podcasts on the Athletic Podcast Network, Warriors Plus Minus, Anything is Potable, Down Dunk, No Dunks, Glue Guys, Sixers Beat, and The Bun and Cardigan Show. For Jay, for Marcus, for Schleck, I'm Zach. Keep it locked in on The Athletic.